This is the second part of a three-part series on the GM 6L80 Displacement on Demand Torque Converter Clutch and HP Tuners video. And in this video, we're going to take apart a torque converter. I'm going to show you all the internal parts, show you what commonly fails, and also show you some solutions that are out there for the aftermarket and give you some idea of what I would do if I were overhauling one of these units and I was concerned about the torque converter clutch. So let's get into that. So here I got a 6L80 torque converter taken out of one of my cores. Uh, I went ahead and cut this open on the lathe. Uh, as you would see a torque converter from the outside, this is what it would look like. And basically you cut the weld out and you could split this converter open. On the inside here, you could see the impeller fins. When this thing is rotating, uh, when the engine's driving this torque converter, fluid from the center of this is going to come out and get flung out basically on the, towards the outside of this converter. That fluid is going to be caught by the turbine and the turbine is connected to the transmission's input shaft. And the fluid that finds its way back in, the momentum of that fluid, and after that, uh, the, the force is absorbed by this turbine, the fluid leaving the center of it is going to get redirected by the stator assembly into the same direction that the impeller is rotating, and that's what gives us our torque multiplication. Without spending too much time talking about the basics of torque converter clutch operation and torque converter operation, you can click on this video up here that takes you to a a video that I've made on how torque converters operate, their construction, and how torque converter clutches operate. So getting more specifically into the 6L80, we're going to focus primarily on this torque converter clutch apply piston. With this friction material here, this is a woven carbon material. It allows actually fluid under pressure, even when this is applied, to kind of wick its way through this friction material, and that kind of removes heat. This is what allows this converter to kind of continuously have slip and not burn up. It can take the heat real well, it can take friction real well, and actually conduct the heat away from uh, the fluid and away from the friction lining. Other things that we see on this converter piston, we've got these dampening springs, because when we apply this torque converter clutch, the cover is going to drive the piston, and since the piston is splined to the turbine, when that is applied, and, and the piston is actually, get on there, when that piston is applied to the converter cover, it's going to deliver engine torque through the cover, through the piston, through the springs, and then right to the input shaft. So we need to have these springs in there to help dampen and cushion out those torsional vibrations. Now that you've learned a bit about the displacement on demand, you can see where that's a really important feature. Uh, and it's also going to create a lot of activity going on in here with this hub because of that, uh, the vibration pulses that we can run into when we switch to four cylinder mode. So this converter piston right here, this torque converter clutch piston, has a, a number of issues. One is it could develop cracks. It can de develop cracks in these windows that we have here, uh, right around where these, this hub section, right around these springs. It could develop cracks around these rivets. Even where these contours are, it can develop cracks inside these contours and uh, just through flexing. And that really comes to the next section here is the pitfalls of this torque converter uh, assembly. Talking with some experts like Bob Warnke at Sonex, he deals a lot and researches a lot with torque converter components. And um, when I ask him why these 6L80, 6L90 converters fail as frequently as they do, he pretty much attributes that to the fact that they're under-engineered. They're, they're made too thin. General Motors is probably spending a lot of time trying to make sure things are lightweight and reducing the amount of metal that they have in here. Well, the pitfall of that is that you're going to run into a situation where you're going to have flexing of the piston or flexing or deflection of the torque converter cover. And that, if you have a lot of flexing that's occurring, eventually that's going to cause fatigue and cracks. Now, another issue that can occur with that is, what, depending on the pressure that they have in this torque converter, that he mentions that there's a back taper that we have on this piston assembly. So actually machine a slight taper to it. So the outer edge, when it comes into contact with the cover, the outer edge is going to contact first. And then as pressure increases on the apply side of this piston across this whole surface area, because realize it's going to be leveraged right off of this lining, which is towards the outside of this uh, piston assembly. So as pressure builds up on this across this piston assembly, it's going to cause it to kind of flatten out. So if I have a taper like this on this friction material, as pressure builds up, it's going to flatten it out. But if I overpressurize, if I have too much pressure, it's going to actually curl it up and I'm going to have excessive contact on the inside surface of this friction lining. So the amount of pressure that these converters see is very important. 
Obviously, they don't see maximum line pressure. They might see uh, 120 or 115 PSI, and that's probably it. So if you're modifying things and creating more pressure than this, than this um, torque converter is really designed to handle, you're going to cause excessive flexing or deflection in this piston assembly, and that's going to end up causing premature cracks or lining wear. Another issue that, they, that he mentioned, since this cover is thin, and there's not much beef to the back of this cover. So when we look at these, where they mount the flex plate mounting pads, so our flex plate's bolted to the engine, and then our converter bolts to the flex plate. These aren't the bolts, but uh, this mounting pad that we have here is right on the other side of where the friction material is going to contact. And with a vehicle that's operated in excessive loads or high loads, or a vehicle that maybe has uh, some additional horsepower put to it, there's deflection or flexing that can occur in this cover under load. And what that happens, what happens there, the, the pitfalls of that is it creates high spots right where these converter mounting pads are. The deflection can cause high spots. And that means when the piston is trying to apply, it's really touching three different spots and putting excessive pressure on those three different spots. And apparently the woven carbon lining does not like that. It's not forgiving to that. And that can cause these linings to fail prematurely. So the long and short of it is, depending on this vehicle's use, if it's being used under heavy duty circumstances, like it's a work truck or something like that, it's always constantly pulling heavy loads. That's really gonna dictate what you have to do to this torque converter to make it live. If you're under heavy loads a lot, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade this converter, make sure you got billet covers, uh, billet pistons that can handle the additional pressure. And we'll look at this in a second, but I've got some charts that basically say if I'm gonna build a stock, if I use an OE converter, these are the types of things I'm gonna do as far as tuning and modification. And if I build something with an aftermarket converter, this is what I would do. So, and that, th those are all my opinion, but let's take a look at those and see. You can always comment below to see if you would do something different. But let's go over and take a look at those little flow charts, and I'll point out what I would do when I'm building a 6L80 in regards to this torque converter clutch. This is something I kind of created in my uh, own little world of what I would do if I were to reprogram or modify a transmission if I was building a stock 6L80 and I was using an OE converter, and a lot of people use the OE converters because they've had bad luck with aftermarket converters. So, but if I were to do that, I would definitely adjust using a tuner software like HP Tuners, the application so that's only applying the torque converter clutch in fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. But this is where there's gonna be some debate probably. I would keep the slip speeds and I would keep the pressure stock. I wouldn't offset that or raise it. I'd, I would disable DOD, but it would be with the talk with the customer. Uh, some people say don't even tell the customer, they won't even know, but, um, but still, the big thing of debate is slip speeds. A lot of people are going to pull slip speeds down to zero and, um, and increase some of the pressure, but with the fact that the cover and the piston is already thin, I don't know if that's really a good idea. Now, if I had an aftermarket converter and it did not have an OE lining, I would definitely still move the torque converter clutch application just fourth, fifth, and sixth, but I would definitely lower my slip speed to zero. And in order to get that to stick and become effective, a lot of people are saying that you do need to increase your torque converter clutch pressure, that you can't just lower your slip speed to zero and expect it to do it. If you test drive it, you'll find that your slip speed's probably still higher than zero, which means you need to increase your um, torque converter clutch pressure, which you can do with the tuning software. Now, if I had an OE lining, I don't know, I'd probably still use slip, but I would definitely still change my torque converter clutch application to higher gears. I don't see an issue with slip when it's low, like 40, 20 to 40 RPM or, uh, or so, because that's so uh, little of slip and those, that woven lining is designed to handle it. The big key is, is to prevent the piston and the cover from deflecting. So that gets you to the performance 6L80. More than likely, it's going to be an aftermarket converter with a non-OE lining, but like I said, you can get an OE lining for this. I would adjust the torque converter clutch to a higher gear, definitely slip uh, to zero and increase the pressures, disable DOD. And you're like, okay, well, where are all these parts coming from? Is Sonex is a company, if you click on their torque converter tab, they got a lot of good information up there. They teach you about the, the materials, you learn about the friction rings. They even have, like if you're a builder, a torque converter rebuilder, they have a calculator in there that teaches you how much pressure you need to put on this to bond. So some neat stuff up there if you're just interested in learning it and the tech resources that can teach you a bit about, about that. Here's the performance converter kit. Well, one of them, just as an example, 
and it's got a billet cover, billet piston, and a couple friction discs in there. So you got more friction surface area by putting two discs in there. You got a thicker billet piston, you got a thicker billet cover. So you're, you're, you're fixing the, um, uh, the you're, you're fixing the deflection that occurs in the piston and in the cover, and you're also increasing your surface area and your friction material. So that's like a win-win. Of course, it costs, it's not free. Uh, and you know, that's, that's gonna add a lot of cost to the build, but if you've got somebody that tows a lot or um, is in a heavy duty situation, I would have to believe that this would be a good upgrade. So that concludes part two of this three-part video series. On the next section, we're gonna cover HP tuners and the software side of things. We're gonna go to the HP tuner site, kind of cruise around there a little bit. Then we're gonna go to a 2016 Silverado and we're gonna actually go through and retrieve the information and I'm gonna show you some of the modifications that people commonly do to these transmissions, the transmission control module, to help make these torque converter clutches live in these units. So see you over at part three.